This is the second part of my comments on the subject of approximate identity. And that's, uh, these comments will only uh, comment on one extra property of approximate identity, the one which is similar to this approximation we built uh, for the uniform functions. This time uh, we will do this for the functions which are summable. But before we do that, we have to quickly discuss with you some general principles, uh, general approximation principles which exist for uniform, for, for sample functions, sorry. So the theorem which I'd like to state without the proof in fact is that this is, it sounds like this. Uh, for every sample function, uh, every positive epsilon, you can always find a uniformly continuous function which approximates your original sample function with, with a given accuracy. In fact, you can even expect that the function g will be of finite support. And that's how we talk about again about the real line and the standard Lebesgue measure on the real line. Uh, the argument behind this proof is just uh, basically it's almost a repetition, direct repetition of the argument I presented for uh, presented in my proof for Lusin's theorem. If you remember that proof, the proof there was a construction type of proof which first uh, considered only the indicators and then we use the fact that sample functions can be approximated by the finite sums of indicators. A similar type of construction will work here. In fact, even you can reuse parts of the proof of Lusin's theorem. And that's all I have to say in relation to this theorem. Now, if I have this result, uh, I can establish what is called the L1 continuity of summable functions, and which says something like this. If I have a function which is summable, then this shifts by the value y, and that is the that is what f sub y stands for. It's the shift of the function f by y units to the right. The shift doesn't go far from the function in terms of the L1 norm. So this is a sort of continuity, but which is measured in the summability norm, not like in the uniform norm we normally use to measure continuous properties of function. So the result, in fact, says that every sum of a function is continuous in terms of the L1 norm. Okay, so here's a quick proof, and it's a very quick because every it is a quick proof because everything is done by this theorem, in fact. So we fix the positive epsilon. We fix a uniformly continuous function, which approximates my f with given accuracy. We also remember that my function g has a finite support. Now, because my function is uniformly continuous, we can produce a delta such that the shift of my function g by y units doesn't go far from g in terms of the supremum norm, in terms of this norm here. As long as my shift is not far. And now, having all that, I can do a very simple estimate. First, I observe that the triangle inequality ensures the expression like this, right? I just take this difference, I plus it and minus it with g, and I pull. Oh, the other way around. I minus and plus it with g, and then I minus and plus it with g sub y. And then the triangle inequality uses three terms. This term is less than epsilon because of the construction. This term is less than epsilon because of the substitution theorem, in that this is just a shift, so in fact this one is just equal to this value. For this term, we use all the inequality, which provides the estimate like this, which provides the estimate like this. Uh, I think there is a sub-index is missing here. which provides an estimate like this, the first factor here, the second factor controlled by epsilon, the last one is just a finite number, and we're done, right? For positive epsilon, we found delta, such that as long as my translation is not far away, it's not uh, further than delta, uh, the difference like this in L1 norm is controlled by the small number epsilon, or possibly scaled by some factor. And that finishes the proof of the L1 continuity result. Now having this L1 continuity result, we can now repeat 
what I said in my previous comments on the approximation, approximate identity in the point 3, almost word to word. In fact, that's the result I'm going to prove now. If I have a summable function on the real line with respect to the bag measure, then the approximate identity convolved with the function f gives an approximation to the function f in terms of L1 norm. The argument to this repeats word word to word to what I said in the, for for the continuous functions. Here it is. First, I take the left hand side. Now I sub in what I have for the convolution, and in one step I will bring this term inside the this inner integration the way I did in my comments, in my comments in my first comments on the approximate identity. If I do that, I will end up with I will end up with the expression like this. Now this integral in the bracket here, we again, while estimate this integral, we'll split it in two parts. One of them will be for the neighborhood, neighborhood around the origin, and the other one will be the, for the rest of the real line. Now the first integral here, this one, we can estimate by saying, by in fact, uh, Ubini's theorem because we can swap over this integration and then the x-integration on this term and on this term will deliver two of the L1 norms of the function f and then the remaining y-integration on this function alone give us the term like this and we know that this one vanishes when we push n to the infinity it's the same we did in the part 3 in my previous comments now for this term I will use the I will use the, again I will swap over the integration, these two, by Fubini's theorem. Now x integration, x integration on this term, uh, treating this as a constant, gives you the expression like this. And the y integration on this one can be controlled by the just the L1 norm of the function phi. And that's how we control this term. L1 norm of the function phi, which is 1, and the supreme of this within the delta. And that basically finishes the proof because now I can say that if I fix an epsilon, I can find delta such that this supremo will be small. Then pushing into the infinity will vanish this entirely and the whole thing will be just controlled by epsilon. 